so smooth. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Angela from Angela Marie Made. Today I'm sharing all about our DIY appliance garage and how we installed it. Previously I shared all about our DIY kitchen built-ins and how we installed them. Part of our kitchen built-in design was leaving a opening for our appliance garage. They are perfect for hiding your microwave or other small appliances that you don't want out on the kitchen that are not the prettiest to look at or clutter up the counter. I first discovered appliance garages on Pinterest years ago and I knew ever since then I wanted one in my kitchen. These kitchen built-ins were the perfect place to add one and it's a very custom and special feature but that doesn't mean you can't have one. So today I'm going to show you all about how you can install one in your own kitchen. The first step of a DIY appliance garage is installing a cabinet box for the appliance garage. It can either be purchased or you can custom build one like I did in parts one and two. And you also need the door or drawer front that goes with it like this. <laughs> One more thing that you need to have for your appliance garage is access to a wall outlet, which we have back in this left corner. And I explained in part one how we had to move our wall outlet to make this work. The next really important piece for an appliance garage is having the right hinges. I did a lot of research on finding the right kind of hinge that I wanted for our appliance garage and I found a hinge made by Blum. It's called the Aventus HL line. I'll link below where I found these hinges. I found a few other hinge options on Amazon which were less expensive than the Blum ones but they didn't look like they functioned as well and the reviews weren't as good. I think Blum is the way to go. It's known to be a quality hinge. Also, one more thing before we get started, I printed out the instructions for these hinges on Blum's website. They do come in millimeters, so we converted them to inches using the converter on Google. These hinges work best with a frameless cabinet opening. If you have a face frame like we do right here, you need to install a piece of wood that's the same thickness as behind your face frame so that you can essentially make it like a frameless opening. You would just put the board up here and install it so it's all flush. We ended up using a larger piece of three quarter inch thick plywood and screwed it to the sides of our cabinet where the hinges are being installed. Mark and drill the pinhole locations for the hinges on the inside of the cabinet so the hinge is installed in the correct position. We marked ours according to the directions that we converted from millimeters to inches. Then repeat this on the other side of the cabinet. So now that our alignment holes are drilled, we want to line up these little notches on the hinge with the alignment holes to make sure it's in the right place. Once the pins are aligned with the drilled holes, you can screw the hinge into place in the cabinet. Once the hinges are installed on both sides, the arm assemblies can be attached. They just snap in place when you push them up and in towards the hinge. According to the directions though, once the arms are installed, you don't want to push down on them to avoid any kind of injury. The next step is to attach the stabilizer rod, but first it needs to be cut to size. According to the directions, the length of it should be the interior cabinet opening minus 5 and 1 16ths of an inch. Brandon is using our Dremel fit with a special blade that can cut metal and aluminum to cut the rod. Once it was cut, he put it in place on the arms and covered the ends with the cover caps. To attach the door, mounting plates need to be installed on them first. Again, we followed the instruction template for the arm model that we have to determine where to mount the plates on each side of the back of our door. We just used some 3 quarter inch screws we had on hand for screwing these plates in place because there were no screws that came with the plates. Finally, the door can be attached by clipping the plates onto the arm assemblies. Mm -hmm. 
we adjusted the tension as well as the sides so the door was level. After installing the door, we noticed that it wasn't going all the way up to the top of the cabinet. It was sitting a few inches below the top of the cabinet. This is annoying because it makes it harder to access everything and it kind of defeats the purpose of trying to make this area more functional. I did buy the right arm assembly model according to the directions, but because our cabinet height is right below the max height of 15 and 3 quarters of an inch for this model, I decided to buy the next size up to replace it. Thankfully, the directions tell you how to remove the door. Installing the new longer arm assembly, our appliance garage functions great and the height of the door for it is just right. The very last step is to attach the cover plates on the hinges. They just snap into place. I love our new appliance garage. It is so fun and easy to use. It's super smooth. So it functions great for daily use with our microwave and other things that we keep out on our counter a lot. It makes me so happy to have our microwave hidden now. It's just super satisfying to open and close it and hide the microwave. our three-part series for our DIY kitchen built-ins, but we still have a full kitchen makeover to do coming up in the near future, so make sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on so you don't miss any of it. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments, and let me know if you could use something like this in your kitchen. Also, don't forget to check out parts one and two to see how we actually built the rest of the cabinets. Thank you so much for watching.